What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyd, and I'm back with some more Age Mythology, the Titans action. Spawning in the top of the map in the blue color, playing as Thor. His name is Vagabond Canada. His opponent today in the red color, playing as a Gaia. His name's Hotcha. The map is Marsh, and this is an old school game with some old school players. Not exactly sure when this recorded game was from. It was suggested to me by one of my fabulous Twitch viewers. And I think it was 2005, 2006, or 2007, somewhere in that area. Uh, maybe someone in chat can um, tell me when it is at some point. But regardless, we have this player right here. And if you guys don't know who Hotcha is, he is kind of the guy that, in, well, didn't invent, but the guy that pushed through with Gaia. He is the one that played Gaia when Gaia was at her weakest throughout all of patch 1.03. Whenever he played, he was playing Gaia. And he really, he actually was the only person or only like 1800 plus player who was making strategies for Gaia in order to deal with like abuse. So for example, making strategies for Gaia against Loki, making strategies for Gaia against myth unit spam, you know, making making Gaia function in the metagame that was um, present at the time of this game. So I actually haven't watched many Hotcha games and um, beyond what I saw back in that time, uh, or even, not even in that time, but when I was trying to like learn some Gaia. <laughs> um, so, very exciting times. If we jump over onto Vagabond Canada's perspective. I can't tell you much, much about this guy, because honestly, he's just one of those million Thor players, or at least from what I understand and what, what I've seen. Um, I don't know how good he was, what his rating was. Or anything beyond the fact that he was one of those top players that played Thor. Because there was definitely like a lot of really strong Thor players back in the day. Uh, who just always kind of scratched the surface of being top one. But never really got there. It's like Thor. Thor players never really sat on top of the... Uh, of the leaderboard uh, and Ensemble Studios online, but there was always a ton of them in the top 20. So, just goes to show you, Thor wasn't always yeah. as weak as he is considered now. Not, I say that like I say it, but it's not exactly true. It's like, we, Thor's not weak. It's not that he's weak. He just doesn't have consistency. That's the big problem. If you get the right map, Thor can be devastating, that's for sure. Now, one thing that I think um, Hotch is going to be aware of because he's a Gaia main is a lot of Gaia players will throw down their Gaia forest willy-nilly with not much thought at all going into it. Uh, because you're playing against a Thor, if you're playing against an Odin, it's the same thing. You have to be super careful where you put the Gaia forest because forest fire is going to be coming into effect. So you've got to be super careful about that one. Um, we also see this relic being grabbed, the Mythical Horseshoes. Uh, Marsh being one of those maps uh, where you can do this kind of thing because uh, there's going to be three relics on the map or four relics on the map, three relics on the map. It's kind of worth because your opponent's not going to have out a Hursa or anything. You can get a really early hero as Gaia. So you can just come and clean up all these relics and he has spotted them all. So Kopesh of Horus is actually going to be really useful for him as he is Gaia. But picking up the rest of those relics as well is going to be a nice little addition. And we do see him coming through Oceanus. Leto was considered way too, um, way too underpowered. So... Just doing a standard, or well, it's actually a later advanced time. It's going seven villages or eight villages? Eight villages. That's right. Am I seeing this wrong? Yes, he has he has one too many villages. Eight villages. Normally you go up seven villages, like a four a four a four thirty, right? But really interesting that um that this is this has happened. There's actually Kopesh of Horus and the Tusk of the Iron Ball. We'll see if a Herso comes over and grabs that one. It's looking like. He's on the way to grab that one. Maybe we'll see what Canada's seen. Canada hasn't seen the relic just yet and he's just searching around for something he's not going to find it. 
So maybe Hodge is going to grab all four relics. Going for a fast second town center and advancing. This is... Um, we don't normally see this from Gaia players. Gaia players normally put the town center first, then the temple and the uh, the advance. But this is a little bit safer from Hotcha. Um, so he's going to go with that one there. So hitting the the classical edge 510 there. And Vagabond counted up. Advancing nice and late here, 515. But if we check this out, he's got his hand axe, he's got his pickaxe, he's got his hunting dogs, pig sticker. This is the way the game was played back then. You would try and advance to the classical edge as fast as you could with all your archaic technology. This is really important. Seeing so Dwarven Armory getting thrown up, potentially going to be a fast heroic gauge here from Canada. I guess he's going to have to feel safe enough to do it. He's still building out her, so though, so maybe a fast second town center is on the way for him. Um, playing against a fast two town center yourself, which is probably going to happen with Guile, means you can grab this second town center yourself and be completely safe. So, But the armory does confuse me just a little bit here, so we'll see what he's going to do with that one. He could potentially do semi-fast classical heroic age or something you're seeing double military academy and a counter barracks coming up for hotcha now interesting i don't know if he can come quite support this uh, especially because he's just about to be out of hunt over here he does have all of these deer so maybe i'm a little bit incorrect there but you do need to have to have two town centers pumping villages you need to have four villages on food for the two town centers and then you need to have an extra villager per military building that you have. So he's going to have to have six villages on food to support um, all of this auto queuing. And then he also needs to have a villager on or two villagers on wood for the counter barracks plus the man is being built. Um, so he's not quite got that at the moment. I'm not sure where he's going with these villages, but it definitely would be smart to just pop one over here. But I guess he is seeing that this down center is going up. The Carnivora and the Forest Fire go down though. That's super cute. Forcing out the Forest Fire Forest Fire okay. here to defend against this to pick off the Carnivora, which would delay that town center from going up. And we are gonna be seeing it. Oh, it survives. Survives with seven HP. And is it can it be targeted? That is hilarious. It can't be targeted. The Gaia Forest completely keeps that alive. The Kaladria, oh, he could have come in and healed the Kaladria with the Kaladria, but the Valkyrie does pick that one off there. So cute little God Power combination. Never really thought to do that. Uh, and, and not only that, but the uh, the Forest Fire had to be used and that's cleaned up the potential wood line for Canada there. Uh, so nice play by Hotcha. Just some innovation that I, ha I haven't seen, right? I haven't seen this in this game from like 2006 or something crazy. I'm just going to say it's a different date every single time I say it because I just don't know. Now Canada being a little bit aggressive here with this longhouse placement. Surprised to see Hotcha not cleaning up that other relic sitting as he um, prioritized it so heavily. Oracle Hero moving in. Oh, sorry. Pr prioritize those... Um, those... Relics with the, the Oracle Heroes, really, I should say. <clears throat> and now the Kaladria. Using that Kaladria to heal up his units. He's kind of... It's kind of funny. This, um... This Kaladria is kind of underused. I don't, I don't think we've seen many people really going at it with it. Like, whenever people go, um, through Oceanus, we normally just see the Kaladria used as kind of like a really expensive raven. Because <laughs> Ravens are free, right? But you could just leave this in your army and have all your units healed up instantly and then go and fight a little bit and not lose any units, pull them back to the Caladria, kind of use it like uh, like a Loki player would use his Healing Spring. And then you effectively get a Healing Spring God Bow for free, which is, well, for a couple of population, I should say. And there's the there's the Heroic Age for Canada here. Getting out the Battle Ball, having to force out some heroes in. Here are Momilla coming down. A couple of these Momilla are going to be thrown away, almost losing one. He does lose one to the Town Center there. Unfortunate. And now the Hill Fort's up. So we'll see what Canada's going to do with that. I assume we're probably going to see some Yarls coming out. There's not a lot of point in making Huskal in this matchup because there's so many Mermillo. Uh, normally, you want to make Huskal against um, gods that like to make cavalry. And seeing as Hotchir is Atlantean, there isn't any cavalry here. Um, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but basically, infantry counter the 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 um, Huskal really well, and cavalry don't. 
So then the Huskar can do a better job against the archers of uh, an enemy civilization, if that makes sense at all. Anyways, we got Archer chilling back here. He's got his two down sends going. He's booming away, getting all the villages out. Um, I still think he probably just overdid it. Yeah, he's overdone it a little bit with the uh, with the military barracks here. And not eating this deer is super confusing to me. He's got a bunch of villages. He's got some villages over here on the hippopotamus, but just over here eating pigs. He's probably got access to husbandry. He does have husbandry, so totally fine. And here's another thing I wanted to see. What does this cost? Cost 100 gold. There you go. For some reason, I thought it costed wood at some point. Maybe it was like a patch that happened and then reverted or something. I don't know. And the carnivora are coming down as well. We have, oh, it looks like another Caladri who was built by Hotcha. Just trying to heal up his units underneath the thing. Caladri here going to eat one of the Yarl. So it's like, just basically like having Bolt. This god power is so strong and then it still does more damage after you bolted the thing. <laughs> Obviously not exactly how it works, guys. Come on. Um, and now going after the hill fort. I think, it, yeah, it is It is a Bragi from Canada here. So interesting to say the very least. And there's not just grabbing his 10% extra cavalry move speed. It's not going to help him out because he doesn't have any cavalry. But you might be seeing... Um, with the relics that he's picked up, we might be seeing him go Contarius in this game. What did he get? Tusk of the Iron Boar and Mithril Horseshoes. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. He does manage to take down the hill fort now. He's putting a lot of pressure on. Doesn't want to be hit with any sort of fast rag from Canada. And Canada's booming really, really nice. Oh, he's actually not building nicely. This dancer is not building villages. And Canada's actually on 69 population. So, that's got to hurt. Now we also see um, Archer grabbing his Bite of the Shark. Really important upgrade. Uh, only gives 15, well, I say only gives 15% hack damage, but the reason why these upgrades are a little bit dubious to buy is because you have to think about what they are worth compared to an armory upgrade. Um, so an armory upgrade gives you 10% and it costs 300 resources, but it gives you 10% to every unit type. Whereas this one only gives. It gives 15%, which is better, costs 100 less resources, also costs favor, but it only affects one unit type. So it's it's uh, a little bit of value you have to throw up, um, toss up in the in the, in the the department there. So we'll see what's happening, get a second town center as well. No armory up, he doesn't have an armory up, so not gonna be able to get to the next page anytime soon. You should just see what Canada's gonna do. It's a lot of villages on wood. Um, here's one thing. Imagine if this ox cart was closer here. He'd have like 1500 wood right now. That's not even an under exaggeration. Hard to, true yellow snow cone. Hard to buy a couple weapons without an armory indeed. Now the Caladria chasing these guys around. Doing no job, actually not chasing these guys around, sitting idle over here now. Feels bad now. <laughs> and now we have Hotcha pushing through here, trying to take down the longhouse. I just had a crazy idea, not really a crazy idea, but you have the Caladria chase like, uh, like um, if you play a team game with like a Zeus player, you send the Caladria over to chase like the the centaur around and you can just immediately heal the centaur up as they run in take some damage kill a villager come out get healed up run in um kill a villager come back out get healed up big brain <laughs> um and nice pick off there of the valkyrie that's gonna be nice canada's got like three valkyries here he's got the shield maiden upgrade it's really strong Hotcha coming in for the raid he's actually right on top of the gold mine there's only four dwarves or five dwarves here now and we do see Canada with an immediate reaction so nice job there not going to be taking any losses just, come in, just losing a little bit of uh, gather time there and then, but he does have a skull mine over here just powering away and it's like, oh, Valkyrie gonna come in. So you see Thea coming through. Thea's a really big, um, a really, I guess, what I'm trying to say, what am I trying to say? Well, the, the, 
the carnivora coming in. He's going to try and kill off a couple of these raiding cavalry here, chill around it. He does manage to kill off one. Um, what I was trying to say is Thay is a really big upgrade or heroic age spike for guy because you get these Stymphalian birds, which deal 200% damage versus myth units. So that means that these Battle Ball, these Valkyrie get picked off really, really easily. And it forces um, the the Norse player to have to spam out throwing Axemen. So then you can transition away from, or you should transition away from Terma into Arcus, uh, Mermillo, and Stymphalian birds in this stage, or maybe even Contarius wouldn't be a bad idea as well. So then he has to build throwing Axemen into Arcus Contarius to deal with your Stymphalian birds, which is obviously not gonna be efficient and you can generally snipe them off. Uh, and it's a really big power spike or a big army composition to defeat the Norse players. We are seeing the powers coming up now for Hotcha. What is he gonna be able to do here? Make out, the other thing you can mix in as well is obviously the destroyers with with the uh, the rest of the units there. And now yeah, going after the house. Always wanna pick those off. Looks like I'm kinda just sitting here but um, trying to play as safe as you possibly can. I feel like at this point, I mean, not even at this point, but like about five minutes ago, he should've just grabbed like this many villages, 14 villages, and just built 14 farms here. And that would have been, um, that would have been a good time for him. <laughs> would have been a good time for him, indeed. Now Palace coming in. Just trying to strangle hold here. Still not making, oh he is making destroyers, but he's, he's got so many turn up. This is, um, this is a big problem with the Atlantean players of old, they just didn't, they didn't realize, they th just all thought that Terma was so overpowered that they could just spam them, but they didn't realize, and here we go, some catapulties coming out, but they didn't realize that it was only overpowered to an extent, it's like you get this early game speed unit to run around the, the map and raid, but it's really bad in the, in the mid game because your opponent gets out these units, which are raiding cavalries, and gets out throwing axemen, or gets out huskar, or gets out anything, and then immediately now our medium th medium turner start doing a very small amount of damage indeed. Uh, and basically, when the mid game comes around, you should really just cancel out the turner and just swap into pure Arcus. We do see that there is a fortified. Uh, town center here, as well as the portable ram coming in to try and pick up the palace. Village are coming in to jab away while the army is attacking here. Stymphalian birds sitting in the back, flinging down the volleys of fire here. Town center going to try and take it out, but you know, you can just retreat that back to the Caladria. The flying Caladria heal the flying Stymphalian birds. So you really have to burst these down. It's really hard to pick them off indeed. Watcher not actually investing into them though. He's sitting at 65 or 60 favor here. Palacing at 124 HP, not wanting to die. And now I'm going to be able to take down this fortified town center. It looks like uh, market is up for Canada though. Looking like he wants to get to the next age. Sitting at only four longhouses, investing into his Axe of Muspel as well. And we see the flaming weapons forced out by Hotcha. And you can just retreat away from that. He's going to be totally fine. And this does mean that... Uh, Hotch is going to be less vulnerable to the Ragnarok, but the Ragnarok is still a very real threat. Because back in patch 1.03, Ragnarok got the full effect of flaming weapons, and with the high base damage that um, the Rag heroes have, the flaming weapons plus 100% is insane. Uh, so it just really just rips to shreds, or rips, uh, rips the units to shreds that it was trying to kill. Um, and now let's check out Hotcha and see he's still making the turn. It makes me so very sad to see that. Uh, and he's actually really short on resources for some reason. Is he... Why? What's his upgrades looking like? He's got all the he's got all the upgrades, but still making turn. Ah, uh, if only you knew Hotcha. If only you knew. All right. But the, uh, the Heavy Destroyer is making another push in here, but I bet you... Look, Canada can just buy 500 food right now, go Mythic Age, have Balda, and then be able to defend here. You can just move forward and, and do the stuff, do the things. 
But I guess Canada just wants to keep building those villages. And there we go, he's got the resources now. How's his armor looking? He has some armor upgrades, there's some high pierce upgrades though. Which makes these turn out even worse. So you really have to be looking at your opponent's upgrades and seeing what is he making? How do I defend against this? But these Stymphalion birds are starting to get really scary. Now Hotcha actually sitting with a lot of gold in the bank. He makes his Hesperus tree. He makes some of those Dryads out. He's got five of these Stymphalion birds. Oh, you got to be super careful with them. Yeah, these Caladrias. You can keep these alive and just get a gigantic mass. It's really, really big. Looks like the Town Center just about to fall as well. Now Vagabond Canada doing the, the Battle of the Shenanigans that we like to see. And this Town Center sitting at 100 HP. Looks like Hotch is trying to rip it down. He's got the Destroyer in the front. The Stymphalion Bird's targeting it down as well, but it's just not going down yet. Really nice defense from Canada. Another Destroyer coming in. Dryads as well going to start flooding in. The, the Jarls are over here. Does manage to pull one of the Stymphalion Birds back to heal that one up. And you see how much damage this uh, Axe of Must Battle does. That's managed to take the uh, this Stymphalion Bird down as more flowing in from the back. And Hotcher is just flooding units, just really low on food. Because he's, I'm not sure, I can't fully understand why he's so low on food. He's got seven farms, ten farms. He's only building, I guess it's the Destroyers plus the two... Units here, I guess. I'm not sure. Making the heavy catapulties. You have. To... I feel like building catapulties against Norse is a really good idea, but you have to be super careful where you use them because they have high hack armor, which means that they don't get picked off very easily, unlike different civilizations which have like the pierce damage. Um, so you have, to... but they don't do a high amount of damage either. So it's like if you're not going to micro them, you're better off just making Mermillo, right? Or Contarius, for example. And there's the Balder. It's going to be a big battle that Canada has been spamming villages out for quite some time. He really doesn't have that many... Look at this units. He really doesn't have that much population in army here. He's starting his trade route as well, so he wants to have a little bit of an insurance policy here. And he just needs to... I guess he can just defend here as long as possible, and we'll see what he can do. No towers being thrown up just yet by a hotshot. He's got to be super scared. He does have these Cairo Baluster in here, but Cairo Baluster, back in the day... Did not get affected by armor upgrades, um, but I guess, yeah, he's got armor upgrades, right? So they didn't get affected by armor upgrades, so this is what you get. What you see is what you get. 25% hack armor, 50% pierce armor, and that is it. So they're expensive, and they don't get any better than when you build them. Uh, you can get heavy, heavy uh, Kyra Ballister, where is it called, and Champion, which is going to give you an extra... Gives extra 25% pierce damage, actually. Both give 25%, so it's almost like those line upgrades make up for the fact you can't get extra weapons, but you can't get extra pierce or hack damage. But you start with high pierce, and maybe that's actually a thing. Maybe that was on purpose. Not sure. You know, you're looking at these units and, and thinking about things, and stuff comes up in your brain, and it's like, what? What is happening? Why are these decisions made? Maybe Cairo Malister are too strong now. I'm just kidding. We don't see them enough. They're not that strong. They're really expensive. <laughs> um, okay. So. Stymphalion birds doing their thing. Sieging away from the sky. Defending. Canada's just like... Dude, I'm just going to go... I'm just going to go 160 population villages. But, watch it here. With the Stymphalion bird raids. These are really risky. Because if you just send over like... Five throwing axemen. You pick these. You pick these off really easily. Yeah. The village is getting sniped. This is going to hurt the Ragnarok just a little bit. And it's depending on how many you can pick off. And then Hotch is still slamming his face into this town center. There's no no regard for human life. He does not care about his units at all. He's just like, I want that town center down. I want it down now. And let me just go. Not just still sitting at like next to no food, even with 13 farmers. It's because he's not up to um, uh, flood control yet. So irrigation is good, but without flood control, it's a slow process, that's for sure. More hill forts going up for Canada. His upgrades haven't flowed in at more, at more either, which is a bit surprising. See dragon scale shields. 
which is important because he's dealing with these stim family birds he's going to be dealing with a bunch of the powers he's getting thrown up i'm sure we've probably got architects doesn't even have masons nah, feels bad man doesn't have masons yet now the stim family birds in here destroyers onto the town center it's going down it's close but i, I can see architects for canada so we can just hold on to this for ages, as much as he wants. So many resources. I'm surprised. It's like he could cancel this this fire giant and go for a titan and then try and go for rag titan if he's actually scared about whether his rag will finish off hot or not. But we'll see. We'll see what he does. The army of hot is starting to get a little bit scary. Five destroyers. The town center is getting low. Bring the uh, Stymphalian birds back when he sees the fire giants. Fire giants do counter these pretty heavily, but now the town center, it goes down. Canada is banking resources right now. Like up the wazoo, not building any more armory upgrades. Trying to get this town center back. Maybe you can get it back with the help of the fire giants. Remember, this is Gaia, so he does struggle, or Gaia does, she does struggle against the fire giants, that's for sure. We're going to be trying to keep this down for the time being. Bunch of ults are coming in for Canada. What? Did he... Did he convert them? He converted... He ulfnarocked when he has a Ragnarok. That's a head scratcher. Now, here's the thing. Ulfnarok is a real thing, right? I haven't talked about this very much, but one of the one of the um, ways you can play Norse, right, um, which doesn't involve Ragnarokking, or it's like a after Ragnarok happens when you re-eco or whatever, is you you go to like a hundred villages or something to get all your upgrades out and to defend nicely and everything like that and keep spamming units out. And then once you've got all your upgrades out, your resources will start flowing up because you can't trade units fast enough to spend the resources or whatever. So then you can um, trade, change like 20, 30 villages into Ulfsar if they make a really big push with an extra, um, with, a, with an extra 15 or 10 to 15 population, which your opponent can't do. Uh, and not only that, you could use it to spam towers out or or um, spam buildings out to a side build, etc. Uh, hello? So these villagers here, these are villagers, right? If you use this god power, then they do uh, a lot more damage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I, I like it though. I like it. I like it a lot. Canada is just trying to get this town center up. He just wants it back. Give me my town center back. He's saying, is he still building villages? No. He's got some idols. He's got villages coming out of this town center. So they are coming out very slowly, and his population is getting sl smaller and smaller. <laughs> but um, Hotchi, like Hotchi's going to have quite the economy soon. He's got uh, Atlas coming in as his defense against. The Ragnarok, the impending Ragnarok. Another palace comes down. These dwarves are just like, ah, what's happening here? Canada has this gold mine over here, but he doesn't know about it. Now he has to leave this area. Not only that, but Hotcha could actually just build like an economic guild here and he'll just stop this town center from ever being grabbed until uh, until Canada can kill the uh, economic guild. And Canada decides that um, Hotcha going Mythic Age is the time for him to Ragnarok. What? Please explain. Please, I don't understand. <laughs> he, he sees Atlas. Atlas does a lot of damage to his Rag heroes, which have a lot of damage themselves. He's got almost full iron upgrades. Probably even has. Yeah, he's got all these upgrades coming in. So, it would be nice to see him just have two armories but obviously that's um not gonna happen but he sees atlas and now he's like all right it's go time let's go <laughs> but big catch up needs to happen here we see the implode coming down gonna pull in a lot of these heroes of ragnarok gonna be super careful to send too many in here which he hasn't actually done you see a bunch of heroes over here as well and then coming back and you see the population will slowly but surely get dragged down but 
It's not that the, the employed kills these off. They all come down to about 70 HP. So it's doing just over half their HP uh, per unit here. And it's gonna, but it's going to do a, to a lot. It's doing it to more than 30. More than 30 rag heroes. Picks up a bunch of buildings as well. And now the defense is on. Can Canada pick off Hotcha here? The building over here was picked off, which is key because it means that there's no guy lush to stop this settlement. No villager over here to help out either. Destroy it randomly, just picking off the hill fort over here. But it will not be strong enough to survive the onslaught that is the hill fort of Canada defending the other one here. And now the rag heroes moving forward. So the way to do this here is you want to make sure, because it's such a late rag, 28 minutes, you're not going to be able to end the game with rag. Your opponent's going to have too many resources. So you want to make sure that you at least get a town center. So if you can pick off this location here, or pick off this location here, then you can get four town centers, reboom nicely, lose your heroes over time, and you will be able to take a win in this situation, especially because you have these ox caravans going. I mean, he probably doesn't have that many of them, right? He's only got 10, but 10 is more than none, right? <laughs> so we'll see. You see the rag heroes crashing in, so he's making the right decision going for this town center. <clears throat> Gonna go after the other palace. And then he will try and take the town center down. We do see boiling oil coming in, which is gonna do a little bit of chip damage. Um, it doesn't act, it only attacks one unit. You can see this is the unit that's taking damage, and it's and I think it still does pierce damage. It doesn't do hack damage or something like that. Let me just check here. Uh, it's not effective. I can't see what it does. Boiling oil. I just Oh, it does, a, it does do a melee attack. A little bit of a typo there, it is. Access. <laughs> um, so, Bolling All does hack damage. Uh, and these um, Hero Ragnarok's have 61% hack armor. <clears throat> so, it's uh, only really doing like 8 damage. A little bit less than 8 damage to each of these uh, Heroes of Ragnarok per second, which is really not a lot. <clears throat> Not, well, I'd say that's a lot That's a lot more than it otherwise would be, but it'd be nice if there was like a double projectile or something, you know, because it kind of shows that it's attacking from different locations, but what can you do? What can you do? We do see the palace getting taken down. Try to build the fanatics. I like the fanatics of the response here from Archer. They're, they're high, they're cost efficient units, like they're, they're high resource to build, high population. But they'll do their damage and they'll do their roll and they're picking off quite a few of these heroes here. And you can see Canada is sitting at 160 population right now. Villagers are spamming out. He's only got one. He's got the uh, the trade caravans coming up over here. I just haven't actually built a market here. I love this Stymphalian bird from Hotcha. Um, just going to be trying to pick off the, the, oc the trade route, which is pretty key. But with the Watchtower coming out, he's going to actually be able to defend this. And we do see the Stimfalling Bird, not microing, actually, he's going to pick this one off, which is a little bit unfortunate. And we are seeing this Ragnarok slowly but surely getting picked off. What you see, a 143 population, 145 population. Did lose access to a lot of these farms during this time here. Some villagers can get picked off as well, it's looking like. These are um, speedy villagers though, they have their channels. So they may be able to get away from here as they are dying here. Um, we'll see if they can get into the town center or something like that. Uh, but the, the Carabellas are going to be picking off a lot of the heroes here. And this Ragnarok is starting to look like it has been dealt with. And Canada did not manage to take out the town center. So we're going into this crazy part of the game that we hardly ever see. It's going to be late game Norse with no god powers versus late game Atlantean with effectively no god powers. And it's fairly even right now. Hotcha and Canada are going to be in a similar position here. So we'll see if the late game of Canada can deal with Hotcha or not. Um, for some reason, actually, this is kind of bad by Canada. For some reason, he decided to spend all of his resources into um, army instead of like saving some for villages. So he's gonna be a it's gonna be a really slow process for him to uh, to get the economy yeah. going, which is gonna give Hotcha even more of a chance to uh, to to win this late game. So if he picks off his army, which he should be able to with this army of his own, because this is a gigantic Atlantean army versus a pretty small 
uh, Norse army. There are the fire giants in the back, but this should all win. Salantian army will be able to win this here for this decent micro, which is looking like it's good enough here with the units attacking the right stuff. Just has to somehow deal with the fire giants and he's going to be in a good position. And we are seeing Canada retreating and he, like all he has to do is build dwarves. He just needs to start the dwarf economy. He's building dwarves from one town center. He needs to build dwarves from this town center onto farms. Dwarves onto this town center onto farms. And then he will be able to spam those villages out. Yo. Canada just has to chill right now. Let Hotcha regain some land that he's lost and just go into late game Norse mode, building all over the map when he gets his economy built or set up and he should be um, it should be a really interesting late game here. Uh, but it's like, oh, he's getting targeted on the gold mine as well. I feel like going on to gold at this point when you've got the trade route, it's probably not the right idea either. Just keep building trade route here. Um, at a certain point, I think, uh, I think it's not, it's a bad rule of thumb, but it is a rule of thumb. If your ox caravans are getting 100 plus gold, it's probably better to not be mining gold. Does that make sense? Anyways. And Hotch are going to be retreating here. He has such a beautiful, beautiful trade route himself. Perfect trade routes from both players. Feels like, feel like this has been forgotten in today's game. <laughs> My myself included. Um, but yeah, Hotch is struggling for gold, I guess, because he's spending it all on the on the dryads and he's trying to move forward. I like that he's got these Argus as well. It's a really strong counter to the Fire Giant. Or not exactly a counter if you micro it well um, and keep the Fire Giant away from the Argus. I believe the move speed, 410 versus 320. It doesn't favor the Fire Giant, but you should be able to pick off the Argus fast enough with some Gaul. Um, so it's important to get those out as a counter to the Argus as well. It's pretty much pure throwing Axemen here. Um, but I guess this is like Bragi, Bragi late game here for Canada. So he can't even get, he doesn't even have the extra damage on his, um, on his throwing action. He does have Axe of Muspel. Actually, that doesn't give bonus damage in this, um, in this, in, in this patch either. Or it doesn't give extra hack damage. On 4.0, I believe it gives a little bit of hack damage. But has a lot of those upgrades, only missing the Dragon Hammer here. Or whatever it's called. What is it called? I feel like I should say the name right. Hammer of the Gods. Dragon Hammer. Uh, now we get the lull while Canada is sorting his economy out. A little bit of a slow, slow grind here. When you think about it, he's got three town centers. He basically needs to get to 60 villages. So each town center will be building four villages a minute. So that means... Uh, what was 60 villages? I can't do math. Can someone do the math? Can someone do the math, please? Anyways, Thor and Axemen are spamming out, doing their stuff. And now Canada, oh, he's getting pushed off the gold mine, but should be okay. Should be able to jump into the fortified Johnson. Nope, not happening. Argus gets picked off. Throwing axe and picking off all these. This is a really bad fight for Hotcha. He's now seen the army that Canada's got, so he should stop making those infantry units that he has. Let's see if he makes any adaptation here. Oh, he's really low on. Did I miss something? Was this was this attacked? I swear Hotcha's trade route was good for a second here. Did he delete them? What? Please make some more trade, Hotcha. You need it. I thought his gold was low. He's still got another gold mine though. He's still got one more gold mine, so he can, he can chop that one up. Got a couple gold mines up here. He's gonna be fine. It's, it's totally fine, but just, um, yeah, make make some of these guys. There you go, make those llama caravans. Good job. That's what we like to see. And uh, make some Arcus. I think I, I was watching a Chrono JJ stream because he was an expert back in 2004. And I think there was a, like a weird consensus that Arcus were just really weak for some reason. And there was just no point in building them ever. But it turns out, if we look at them, 
Arcus are basically um, Toxodes, like in nearly every single way except for range. So they have more range and the same everything else. So it's like the, the thought process behind Arcus being bad was so ill-founded based on data. Uh, so here we go. The destroyers are going for a little town center, right? I like this. Uh, the way the way you do this is you time it so that you clash into the army or or try and distract the attention of your opponent while the destroyers come in and target down the town center. Um, Hotchie's got so many resources now in the bank that he could even like. Well, he doesn't have that much favor. We'll see what happens here. Looks like the uh, the army of Canada moving forward. Some docks coming up. We might be seeing a transport ship running into this location here. Maybe going to be able to stop the trade route. We'll see if that happens or not. Now the destroyer's coming in, going to be targeting down the fortified town center. <laughs> and the fire giants are sieging away. Argus going to be moving forward. This is not what you want to do. The fire giants are going to be out of position. These Argus do... Wait, do they outspeed? No, yeah, they do outspeed, but some poor Argus management here. There we go, going to pick off one. It's really big, but these are now throwing Axemen basically against a full infantry army. So the throwing Axemen with good micro should be able to take these out, targeting down one of those Argus with the uh, throwing Axemen. Does make that good. Uh, do these have like a dying effect? No? I just saw a bunch of units die when the... Uh, or like a bunch of units take damage or something when the Argus died, but I think that was just my imagination. And now the all oh, the destroyers going after the house. Nice reaction from Canada to get onto this. Um, these destroyers will all get picked off. And there are these Ulfsark here. He does have Call of Valhalla. So, I mean, it's not... I mean, it does give the Ulfsark extra HP, but there's not really any point in making them beyond um, dealing with... Cavalry, and you can deal with cavalry with enough towers or something like that. And here we go. Throwing axemen are doing their thing. What's this destroyer doing though? Makes the he makes the transport ship. The transport ship has been made. What can back? What can he see? You can see up to here. So all you have to do is build like in this back spot some barracks to make Momillo to come in here to defend your villagers making a palace in this location making towers in this location okay that's another way of doing it you can make a palace make fanatics to defend it but it's just slower train time right train time train time where's my train time 12 seconds oh i'm wrong am i wrong they're the same train time it doesn't matter it's just faster to make military barracks right here we go palace is up Villagers coming in, Hill Fort getting taken out. These fire giants. Oh, these are all heroes. The hero destroyers coming in. And they just. Well, do they just completely. Yeah, they completely destroy the fire giants with their bonus damage. Because they get. They get set, they get the 700% bonus against myth units because they have such a low, or they're technically supposed to have low damage, but 8.25 damage is not low when you have iron weapons, right? Well, I mean, he's got iron weapons, which pushes him up to the 8.25. And compare that to the 7.65 of the fully upgraded throwing axemen, right? Which don't get that much. And now the palace is up. The second palace is up. Destroyer's coming in here. Going to be able to target down this uh, market. But he has to be kind of concerned because there's a, there's a gold mine here. So you're going to cut the market off and put invest population into that. Uh, you also have to cut off the gold mines as well. Uh, and now Hotchin stopped mining this gold mine. He's actually not mining gold anywhere. And he still only has like 15 llamas. 16 llamas? It's not enough to really support the army that he has. We've got so much gold in the bank that it shouldn't matter for some time. And now the market is going to be going down as well. <laughs> Repairing this. And he's going to flood this with buildings. Which is going to do oh, counter barracks. I asked the question. Don't make, don't make counter barracks late game. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. Oh, and there you go. Caraballus to get affected by a burning pitch as well. Another thing I didn't know. So they don't get armor upgrades, but they do get burning pitch. So they were sort of intended as siege units, right? Because siege units get affected by a burning pitch as well. And there you go. And now the fire giant's coming down. Another marker gets thrown up. 
and the legendary Yao coming in to clean this location up. And while this goes on, this is the time you want to push this town center as hard as you can. Don't go elsewhere. But that's what we're seeing. I guess the other option you can do is clear this out and then try and set up a, a bit of a bit of a position here to siege this town center because there's no buildings over there. Because all of this little attack here is going to get taken out. The throwing axemen make their way over onto the market here. We see guard towers has been researched as well. Now the throwing axemen getting taken out. And the destroyers will move in to take down the fire giant of Canada. Absolutely insane, but this will be taken out. We do see some some more hero destroyers coming in. They will be able to clean up most of these uh <laughs> these fire giants. And the only thing really slowing Hotcha down right now is the fact that he can't get any more favor generation. Um, it's kind of it's kind of a a big issue, he, right? He needs he needs to get like more favor so that he can pick off the fire giants with all the hero destroyers he makes, and the destroyers um. I, I don't know what they cost. What hero destroyers cost? Three favor? Four favor? Not sure. And he's going to be making siege for him. <laughs> Take down the watchtowers so he can keep harassing this. Um, I, ooh, is this town center in range? It's close. It may, I think it's in range. Uh, we'll, we'll see if it's in range. Um, but there's a lot of old suck here that can just throw down docks and defend against this. We do see a Barim is up. The Heavy Siege Barim is out, so we'll see if he can target this, but it looks like they're stuck here. He needs to put- yeah, there's no- there's no pathway through this water. He needs to put a dock down here if he wants to, and we see the destroyers coming into the base, picking off more houses of Canada, who's really struggling at this point to keep up, but Canada's got so many resources in the bank as well. And like I said earlier, you don't want- look at this. He's got- he's got too many villages at this point. You only need to have- Roughly 60 civilian units as Norse in the late game. When you're fully upgraded, you don't really have to have more than 60. And maybe even 60 is too many, right? Um, so you want to just grab a bunch of these villages like, and just turn them into Ulfsark and go. Go build towers everywhere, side build, do all the things. Because if you sit on that population that you have, you just, you just sit on resources and resources are kind of useless. Um, if you can't spend them. Anyways, more fire giant coming in. The heavy Kyra Ballister in the back. Trying to do that thing. Imagine if these were Arcus though. Just imagine for half a second. His fire turn just demolished the Kyra Ballister. Like it doesn't matter. Because the, they cost a lot. They do they do a decent amount of damage. But they get picked off so fast. If you have a good counter to them. Now we see Hero Fanatics coming in. They actually do so much damage to the to the fire giants, right? Four hundred percent. I guess they cost a lot though, right? One thirty-five, one hundred, plus the cost of the the fanatic itself. They are supposed to be a late game um, hero as well, right? And the destroyer getting picked off. All the other things dying. Canada making a small pushback. Has a lot of a lot of um idle military here, but so does Hotcha. Because he can't utilize these these seed ships here, right? He needs to use them somewhere. Yeah, there's nothing I guess you can pick off the military buildings over here, maybe. I don't know. I think one thing that Hotchu could be doing, he's probably got, does he have a lot of resources? Yeah, he's got a lot of resources in the bank. Just take these villages up here and just build a bunch of buildings. Build buildings all over the map so you spread the entire map with Gaia Lush as if you were playing Zerg and spreading creep. Uh, it's better, well actually, I think it's the same thing, right? You can't build buildings on Zerg creep. I don't know how it works. I can't remember, I can't remember uh, StarCraft 2. But you can just spam buildings everywhere. It prevents side builds. Um, and and then you just have a response whenever anything happens, right? And we see the Barim picking off these units. Actually, 
I don't think it's strong enough to pick off the villain, the units here, because he's fully upgraded units, right? Picks off one. Trading one for one. And he's gonna pick off a longhouse as well. Hilarious. And now we have the Baragi Ulfsark coming out. They're not they're not tier Ulfsarks, they're not my favorite Ulfsarks. You have Forseti, you have Bragi, and you have Tyr, and you get these bonkers strong Ulfsark. They have like 64% hack armor or something insane um, if they're Thor, which I think is the, yeah, Thor's the only one that can can get those. Oh no, Loki, Loki can as well, but so Loki will have less hack armor because you don't get the final upgrade. So the fully upgraded Thor, uh, Thor Ulfsarks, doing work. Building them into Kyra Ballastar. I love it. I love it. Um, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. But I feel like we're in one of those unfortunate states of stalemate here, where neither player can push, and Hotcha is sitting overpopulated, over ecoed here, which is one of the big issues with um, with Atlantean. Um, well, it's not even a big issue with Atlantean, it's just a big issue with late game players in general. Because we don't get to play it very often, so we don't know what is um, optimal. And optimal is not floating 5,000 resources there, you don't need that much income. So you can slow that income down, give yourself some more population to play with. Like even if you just killed a couple of villagers here. Also having a hero citizen is a really bad late game, unless it's building buildings. Building buildings in a hit system. If you're building like watchtowers here, that's effective population because it does damage to your opponent, right? Well, it's, it, it's, it's like the, the every tower you're building is three population while it's being built. And then after it's built, it's effective population. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Um, here's the other thing that you could do, which I don't think I've seen very much of. I just saw in the chat from um, Kinos. You can, uh, you can go Titan and effectively save resources again, do an ult the rock, make 30 ult stuff to build the Titan out. Um, but then you're wasting 60 population on a Titan, whereas your opponent only has to spend 30 population to be building it as fast as you. But, Balderam, oh he doesn't have the Balder upgrade. That's so important, is he building it out of something? Let's just quickly jump through them all. No, he's not. You want to get, I can't remember what it's called, what it's called. You want to get this Dwarven Augur, um, because it's, I mean, it's, it's insane, right? What does it actually do? Extra 20% crush damage. Insane, plus the training time, obviously, but the crush damage is huge, because they already they already have 60 crush damage, so 20% on 60 is like, uh, like an extra 10. I don't know what it is. You guys do the math, you do the, uh, the math on that one. Um, 60, whatever it is. It goes up by 8. There you go. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a lot of extra damage, right? Coming back in. We're going on to the town center. If Hotcha loses this town center, it's, it's not game over. Because he can come in and defend it for a while. And he's going to have to be like a, like a tower spam. Like a lame this town center up a lot. Um, Hotchin is just with the Siege Brim, it's just like another little bit of waste of population. Hasn't gone after the trade route again, which disappoints me a little bit. You could do that. Lots of idle villages for Canada as well. But it's looking like Canada is making some progress over here. <laughs> but now they've seen that uh, Hotchin's found another place to attack. Finally making those Arcus. Making the Arcus as a response to Ulsarg. Look at them. They got low... I mean, I can't compare them right now, but if you check out... Toxodes, and compare the stats. Fully upgraded Toxodes versus fully upgraded Champion Arcus. What do you get? Do you get this? You get roughly this. I mean, they have a touch more HP. I don't even know. But the extra range really makes up for it. And now we have the side build. I love this. Going to be cutting off gold from Hotcha, but Hotcha's got 3k in the bank. So he has to cut this off and hold it for so long. So we'll see if he can do that. And not only that, he's still got four villagers gathering gold as well, which is enough considering um, he doesn't have to get upgrades here. And he's still got this gold miner. So holding this corner is going to be uh, a long time needed. We are seeing a hill fort coming up in the back though. It's going to allow him to get some nice 
uh, nice attacks in onto this. And Otsu just builds another market. It's not even that much worse than this one. In fact, you could build a market over here. And it would be a better market because it's further away from this town center. <laughs> uh, anyways. Still going strong, it's looking like. I think this market also runs through range of this hill fort. So the, uh, the Llama are going to die eventually. So if you put the market up here, it'll go maybe like around this way. Away from the hill fort. Don't have to worry about it. Oh, actually, Canada doing that for him though, chucking this wall up, means that the uh, Llama Caravans will run around it. So that'll be totally fine. Then he, he's just running past this hill fort maybe. No, they'll run through here. Interesting. Whoa, the economic guild going up. <laughs> it's uh, it's a little bit too far away from the walls though. Oh, this uh, this counterbalance is going to stop the um, stop the walls from going up. It looks like, at least it should. It takes a little while for this to spread out. Um, what's the game ticket? I, I think. What do I have to do? Go to Gaia. I don't know how. This one. No, that didn't work. I don't know how to look at a guy as uh, I can I can push F1, I guess, but and yes, someone in the chat is saying who are these players? This game is from like 2000 and I said a different day. This this, this game was from like 2003, 2004, 2006, seven. Um, Hotcha was one of the first top uh, top ELO Gaia players ever, um, and Bagger on Canada was just a, a, I think I don't know much about him, but he was definitely in the top twenty uh, at some point back in the day. I feel it's just getting picked off. These Huskal are not brave brave Huskal, so they don't do a lot of damage. They don't do the double damage to um, to palaces or anything like that either. You do need, you just basically need to get these portable, oh, he still doesn't have it. You need to get Dwarven Augur and make these things come and attack this town center. Oh, both players just fighting each other here. <laughs> oh, now he says the village is in. What are you doing? You're gonna make them make them into a uh, Ulfsark? How much resources do you have? Oh, you don't actually have that many. So finally, it's looking like the economic management of Canada is looking a little bit better. Floating, floating wood's not a bad thing because sometimes you have to spam out uh, buildings. In fact, I mean, you could be spamming out buildings, but this is what Hotch is doing really nicely. See, so he's finally got the guy lush kind of everywhere. Not sure why he's so desperate to pick this stone wall off. This is not. This is actually just a better marketplace from over here. <laughs> just put it over there, bro. The villagers coming in using their bonus to pick off the, the champion Karabaster because like, they're, they're classified siege, right? So villagers will do extra damage against the Karabaster. <laughs> Another wall coming up to Canada. For some reason, the guy Lush hasn't died yet. Takes a while to die, it looks like. He finishes it off. He finishes it off. <laughs> Almost like a ghost building. Oh, it will be. Oh, walls get built so fast though. Back in the day, this is the wall build speed. If this was this was Vubi Balance Patch 4.0, it would not have gone up. One off suck and all this for days. And the wall repair speed is so high as well. You see how much damage he's doing? Like none. <laughs> Oh, he's actually put the market here. Okay, fair enough. It's a safe, look, it's a safer market, but the Llama Cameron's only getting 37 gold, whereas Canada's getting 115. So it's a big, big difference. It's not It's not quite as bad as it looks. Like per trip, these, these obviously uh, take less time to do a trip, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it's still a big difference. But now once you're moving in up the top here, I like this. 
Military building's going up. Just convert these to offsark. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of gold, I guess, but... Let's make some offsark here. How many caravans does he actually have? You can kind of go... Yeah, I, I think it's probably... Oh no, he has more. Yeah, this is about as many caravans as you want. It's fine. And there we go, there's the offsark coming out. So he's like Canada's economy is really, 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 really good at this point in the game. Um, and Hotchio, I think he's like actually just lost some villages, so he's no longer max villages. So it's slowly starting to sort itself out. <laughs> Funnily enough, he's still floating so much wooden gold that he could just spam towers out everywhere. But I think back in the day, like people didn't really understand or like want to. There was a little bit of like. You're kind of frowned upon if you made like a lot of towers, but I don't know. Like there's like no lambing from anyone, it's just hill fort spam. I mean there's some towers here, there's only three towers on the entire map, which is interesting to say the least. Everyone in chat. Why is he not going wonder? Well, 45 favor, it's not enough. Canada, only 42 favor, also not enough gold. So, there you go. Take that. Take that, chat. I guess there was that that AI taunt. If you ever play against the AI, what's it say? Um, children or no, it's not. Something about something about children fighting with buildings. No, that's the wall thing. Walls are for keeping children in, not for keeping me out. I swear there was a building one, but I can't remember. <laughs> uh, fire giants getting picked off. Doing their thing. Uh, this, this is looking. This is looking very much like Hotchir is going to be able to make a push through. Still not making any fire siphon there. Oh no, the baluster coming out. The dreaded baluster. What do you do against fire giant baluster team? What do you do? Children fight with buildings. Men fight with men. That's the one. You got it. Let's 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 use that one. Contarius here, for sure. But the one defense that Gaia has, which is one thing, because we don't get to see this from Gaia. We don't get to see the late game Gaia come in. You can't build walls forward. So you have to like you can't you can't push forward fast enough to get the walls to surround the, the baluster. So actually, Gaia is a good defense against a fire giant baluster just because of the Gaia lush. Men fight with clubs, children fight with buildings. I like it. I like it. There's so many golden taunts from the AI though, right? Like... Um, can you perhaps share some of your technology with me? <laughs> um, here we go, destroyers coming in. It's gonna be a close one, it's not like it's gonna live. Now this big push from Hotcha has been slowed down. All the throwing axemen are chilling here. But Hotcha going for a town center raid. He only has one destroyer here. The fanatics are going to do damage. So are the dryads. But not as much as a destroyer would do. But he's not clicked on. Okay, he's just clicked here for some reason. I'm not sure what that's to do with. But okay. Hotcha's using this as a this population over here as a, as a time. He's deciding to not go for the town center. Maybe just sit here and pick off some ox caravans. I'm surprised he hasn't gone for this like side build again either. Canada, he doesn't have line of sight, so you could sneak some buildings in here. But also, Canada could build a dock here as well and make his own transport ship over. Ulfnorok coming in to clean this up again. There we go, the tower's starting to come up by Hotshell. This is uh, 
This is where we hold them, but the, the, oh, the villager gets picked off there. Had only one HP or something. Go, the Atlantean units just can't compete right now. That's idled some Ox Caravans though, so that's a thing. Happy days. Oh no! He's making Contarius now! Remember these Contarius have got Mithril Horseshoes and Tusk of the Iron Ball. So these are these are strong boys. 201 HP, compare them to the reigning cavalry. 162 HP. But the cavalry have more armor, so it's basically the same effective HP, I guess. In a way. Dude, Balder, Raiding Cavalry bonus. Uh, he hasn't got it. Just Archers and Throwing Axemen, so nope. No Contarius damage at all. I'm surprised to see those Contarius, to be honest. I don't know what that was about. Why he's, why he's making them. The infantry was doing fine. <laughs> But, he's managed to hold yet again. We'll see him, he's trying to rebuild the palace. He needs to get the Contarius in to kill the, um, the Ballister here if he can. He's so obnoxious. Villages are idle though. Hotch is now out of gold. Still has this gold mine here though. So he could come over and, and mine that. And uh, how's his trade? Well, he did have like 25 trades, right? So... He's also fine with his trade route. 17 villages on food as well. <laughs> How much resources? How are we going for Canada? He has no wood in the bag. He has no wood on the map. He has to chop down wood outside his base here. And this is controlled by Watchtower. So he can't even... He can't even chop this wood down. So the only wood on the... No, there's no wood on the map that Canada can chop down. So you can only buy wood here. So you have to be really careful about these uh, these baluster and Hotcher on the other hand, he's got two Gaia forests still, so he can uh, he can get quite a bit of wood out of those. How much does it make? It makes twenty Gaia trees and they each have twenty or two hundred wood. Is it two hundred wood? One hundred fifty wood each. But actually, he can now start chopping down this tree now. He's controlling this area a little bit. Looks like the food based army is all you need though from Canada. Watch you not able to hold on. Where's his army at? Oh, he's going for a little side build here. Building guard towers right underneath the hill fort. What? <laughs> what is this? I like it, but what is it? He's got oh, he's got some idle units here. He's just got one one palace making idle units. You can send these forward and try and pick off the the town center, but he's gonna lose. He's losing so much of his base. Contarius hero is coming in. We come after the fire giants. Should be able to pick these off really quickly. They have some upgrades, that's for sure. And, but the uh, the micro coming in now gonna refocus. No, keep him alive. Okay. We can go after the baluster or something like that. More towers up. Towers are up, surrounding the hill fort. Remember these villages? They've got channels. They're moving at three point nine speed, so. They get in there pretty quick without losing too much HP. Could even make these heroes so that they um, so that they can, what you call it, build faster, I guess, Just tank more damage. And now the uh, the guard towers are gonna auto focus these ox caravans and pick them off as they as they're walking in. Can just keep building these every which way. <laughs> and now the ulfs are coming in. The walls are too slow. I mean, you could actually survive in here a little bit if he wants to. The destroyer is coming on this side as well, going for the town center. Some really nice uh, multi multi angled attacks coming in from Hotchia, sacrificing the middle of the map for this, so he really needs to get some value out of it. He's really just fi finishing off the um, the walls and the fire giants moving in. Then we're losing some of these villages, almost losing this village to the hill fort. Garrison inside the town center. And now the Ulfsark are going to be able to clean up the destroyers, but this is a big population sacrifice for Canada here. Hodger can now rebuild this center if he wants. He has the resources to do so. 
He's not on top of it just yet. And now the fire jump will pick this off. The market deleted, another market built up. I really like this defense from Canada. He's on this twice now. He sees the, the side will come in. He's like, don't overreact. Rebuild the market, delete this market. And then I can just keep trading as if nothing's going on. Slowly deal with this and then go back to normal. Contarius raids coming in. I remember these have, yeah, they get an extra 15% hack or extra 200% hero Contarius damage versus buildings. So doing um, doing a crazy amount of damage there. <laughs> Imagine if Blue deleted the market and couldn't build wood by wood to rebuild. True. True indeed. Uh, What's the um the trade limit at? Like it's buying wood still not that expensive. It's only ninety. They haven't bought that much wood at all. It's only ninety. If that's accurate at all. Not sure. Hero Contarius just diving into the tower center. One, one bat. I think... I mean, there's no towers here. But I think Crenellations... Yeah, doesn't affect Hero Contarius. So, uh, if there were towers here, you could use the Hero Contarius to take them down without too much hassle, right? But now Hodge is really low on wood as well. Made some uh, fire giants idle here. It's like 10 population idle is a lot. But Hotcha just can't push in. <laughs> Come on, Hotcha. You're the fan favorite. Get in here. Pick off this Thor player. Kill him. Yes, the Argus. Good, the Argus micro. Get the other one. That's what we like to see. <laughs> yeah, another Stim Fallenberg coming out. That, the thing about myth units late game is that they, they've got so much less value late game than early game because they don't get affected by armory upgrades. So you can see Stymphalion Bird has 15% hack armor, 30% pierce armor, 7 damage per second. Compare that to a throwing axeman who's got like 50%, 40%, and 7.65, so the damage per second is not that much more. Plus then, obviously, the bonus damage that throwing axeman do against flying units, and Stymphalion Bird's become a very, very inefficient unit. A lot of um, ways the population in the late game. Now we've got the, the dock getting taken down. Will Canada make his own docks here? That's the question. More fire giant here, and again, another another thing like you gotta, gotta pick these off somehow. Hotchu does have 35 or 38 favor in the bank, so he can just make some heroes. Has made some Contarius here, Hero Arcus as well. And start trying to take down the fire giants. But they get picked off so fast as well. Palace will go down. <laughs> okay, Canada's gonna build a wall across here. Okay, I mean, it's not like the transport ship can just swing around it onto here. Oh, here we go. The transport ship does that already before the wall's out. Oh my god. And the fire giant getting sent over immediately to deal with this. It's got 9 HP citizen. I like it. Now we are still in the center of this map. I feel like I could leave the screen here and we would see everything happening right now. <laughs> oh man. What a meme game. Build some towers, damn you. Build some baluster, towers, fire giant. Put Hotcher out of his misery. There's just so much more population here for uh, for Canada than Archer. So the trading is so much more efficient for Canada. He's just got more population in this area. Not only that, the fire giants are just really strong units. And even though these are fully upgraded Atlantean units, it's like they're still fire giant. You can't you can't keep up with the fire giant. Now Hotcha is having to retreat yet again. 
So Canada has to use this time he's built now, or this this opportunity he has now. What? The, the, just a, it has two HP. You had fire giant. You clicked him. They walked straight past this villager. Straight past. It's like villager was here. Your fire giant went like this. <laughs> okay, finally Canada's gonna come over and pick this off. There we go, he dies. Yep, dead. And then, uh... I wonder if... The, I think these would actually pick the, um... The fire giant off if he focused it. But he's not focusing it. Maybe. Maybe not, actually. I don't know. Hard to say. Okay, Hotchus still has two, two Gaia Forests here. And he's opting... He wants to chop wood down in the middle of the map. Right next to all of this. He's going to lose all of these. He's going to lose all of these wood villagers. Yeah, here we go. The, the units have seen this. They're like, what are you doing, Ocha? Get out of here with that wig sauce. <laughs> and the fire giant special on all of those. Just like, wax them. And another Contarius raid. I guess one thing you can do with a Contarius that you can't do with, like, say, destroyers. Destroyers coming in. Is house raid. So you run around and just pick up all the houses. It's a thing. And Hotchus just going for this town center. Building a counter barracks. Why does he opt for that? You can't, you don't build Contarius out of, out of counter barracks. And the old side just immediately get built as a defense. And you guys complain about mercenary. I tell you what, this is absolutely broken has no train time instantly creates uh... <laughs> fire giant still chilling here but more carabalister coming out loves them carabalister they're doing work though that's pick off those infantry nicely the village again picked off. I keep looking at the red dot up here thinking that something's going on, but it's just a red dot. It's never gonna get built. That's a uh, look, that's a hundred and a hundred resource, 125 resources there. Could get that back. You may need it, it's running low. Actually, Hotchup really running low on resources. Oh, he has to build villages again because he lost so many up here. Because he didn't want to use his Gaia Forest for some reason. Come on, put the wonder down. Just do it. I mean, you don't have the resources to do it, so maybe maybe don't do it. You don't have the favor either. Well, I mean, on the plus side, Ochi's economy is now more in line with what it should be, and he's going to start winning these fights. Like, look at this army now. It's 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 nice. It's a nice army. Canada's army, not so nice. I mean, it's not bad, but oh, he's rebuilding villages as well. I think, he, I think it's, uh, I think, yeah, he does need to. He's got zero food in the bag. That's 4,000 gold, though. <laughs> what am I even watching? Hotchie <laughs> uh, gets pushed back. And Hotchie gets pushed back. And Canada gets pushed back. And Hotchie gets pushed back. And we're still in this area for now. Destroy a building, I guess. defense here. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do if wonder is not an option and towers aren't an option?
Is he? Oh, he's got. He's going back to full villages. He's got villages on auto queue. He's gonna throw away all that beautiful population work that he had. And he still hasn't made the guy a forest. Why? The destroyer's coming in. I can't deal. Where is it? <gasps> the long, the long con. He knew. He knew. He's saving this wood for the end of the game because he knows that he's going to be out of it and he's going to need it. Wood now costs 197 gold to buy. It's expensive, man. And Hotshot wants the wood for himself. He's going to munch through this. Oh, it's 200 wood. 20 trees, 200 wood. There you go. You do the math. What's that? 4,000? That's 8,000 wood that he can get from these Gaia forests. Boom. Let's go. He still has another, like, tree that he could make as well. Like, if he really wants some extra wood. <laughs> I'm just joshing. I know you can't chop it down. More hero champion destroyers, yeah? Not hero destroyers. Still gonna make a way, his way through here. The walls are up. <laughs> there's only really two or one. There's only really one wall here, but it looks like there's so much more. So you can sneak through. Just sneak through, bash down this, kill this, and you got it. Yeah, guy late game is insane, right? I'll tell you what they should do. They should make some maps with no wood. That way, Gaia can just be OP. <laughs> like he couldn't, he couldn't have made this this like wood in a more precarious position either. I mean, it's obviously it's safe at this point, but if he started losing or anything, he could just lose this wood. <laughs> he can't chop it down. Like if the fight was on this town center, he wouldn't be able to chop this wood down. He's still building villages. <laughs> I can't deal, and it's gonna work. He's almost able to take the town center down. Cleaning up the heroes though. Well, they aren't heroes. <laughs> Guardian of. Io is out. He's got the extra, the extra upgrade. This is a really bad upgrade. I mean, obviously it's okay because what's the recharge time? Eighty seconds, but or eighteen seconds, but negative twenty percent. It's like not even two seconds of of extra, extra time, like less time for the Guardian of Io to like kill a hero, to kill a unit. Surely. Yeah, it gives it, it gets him line of sight as well. Yeah, that's right. What was that? Five Argus line of sight. Sick. <laughs> Wait, what is the line of sight that they have? Twenty? They start with they start with eighteen, but like a normal unit has twenty eight, right? Yeah, twenty six, twenty eight. So like, what does it matter? <laughs> oh, I so troll. Ensemble Studios trolls. Interesting little fight here. The Destroyer taking down a Ballister. It's a good trade. It's a good trade. You will be able to take this out. It's not the best units to have here. The Fanatics will actually clean these guys up. They don't do that much damage. Maybe? That'd be close. Nah. The Fanatic completely destroys that. Ballister something as well as well. And then the Ballister will be cleaned up. And... <laughs> I didn't notice this. Look at this wall. Just, yep, yeah, you're not allowed in here. Yeah, there's two population just chilling here for Hotshot. <sighs> Still no Titans out. I like it. I like that no one's gone Titan here, because 
You'd be well in your rights. It'd be very easy to go Titan here with all the resources you can bank up. But whether or not it would actually win you the game or not... Like if Kochi could get a Titan out... It's 20 population. It's a lot of population. All the buildings are up. You just have to throw down a bunch of towers and you can kind of defend it. You could leave the Titan at home, I guess, and just build a Wonder afterwards. You need 100 favor. And these town centers, they gather favor at, what's it, 0.09 favor a second. So every, let's just say every 10 seconds you get three favor. So he's going to have to wait quite a while to get to 100. I'm just still trying to go for these like destroyer side builds while this is going on. Oh, the guard tower is coming up for Hotcha now. He's ready. He's ready to begin laming. I like it. Do it, Hotcha. Do it to him. Show him. You've got full villagers again. You need to kill them off because you have too many. Almost out of the wood. Are you going to... Oh. Yes, the guard tower, it's up. The damage that this thing does is insane, right? 16 damage, that's actually 32 because it shoots two projectiles. On top of that, if he's attacking, if the guard tower is attacking a um, cavalry unit, it does an extra 100% tower damage. So you're actually doing like 60, what was it? 64 damage to a cavalry unit. 32 damage to something else, so it's good. It's good. But here's the thing, here's the problem. If you tower, then that means that it's okay for your opponent to tower, right? You ever play those games where you play against someone who just like really likes to lame? So, if so, and you see them doing it, you're like, oh, okay, well, I'll do it as well then. <laughs> Um, that's generally how it goes when I'm playing. Not really, but, <laughs> but, um, it definitely gives you the green light to do it. If you want to. But the big thing about towering, which would have been key for Hotcha earlier, um, is that he could hold onto a location while doing those side builds. Or side, side attacks much easier. He is out of wood yet again. Wait, where is he chopping the wood down? He found actual wood, but so has Canada. He's back on the tree. That's the only wood he has left, though. How many trees are here? I can't look at it. It's hard. Oh, there's, there's a little over 30, right? Well, there's at least 30 there, so it's a lot of wood. Pepe says the second projectile is less accurate, so it's more like 24 DPS on average, but it's still really good. Right, the first shot only one arrow will hit or something, right? And then after that, every arrow hits. Is that how it works? Or well, the percent just goes up? I'm actually really not sure. I'm like watching it intently now. I think if the unit's moving, like a cavalry, the first one will hit and the second one will miss. It's stationary, both will hit. Maybe. I don't even know. Somebody who knows something should say. Can you confirm that there's an end to this game? Nah, this is a viewer request again. Someone wanted to sit me through this painful experience. <laughs> so you get your wish. Whoop, the walls? Has to push off the wood, can't let your opponent wood 
Which is really important. Oh, he's gonna. Oh, it's been spotted. Canada. Canada is. Hour and 22 minutes. His senses are completely. Completely ready for this. He's way on top of it. Most people would have been like, what? Walls are up. But not this Canada. He knows what's going on. Hmm. He's trying, he's got the gate up, he's got the wall up. We're in. Are you gonna upgrade these uh these walls at all? <laughs> I mean actually that's like the first wall he's built. Right. Are you always gonna build one over here? No. The villagers are back in. Oh, he tried to get the quick wall in, but not fast enough. Random citizen moving forward. Oh, he still has wood here. Like, he's got so much. He's, the gods have favoured him with the wood spawns. At this point, does someone just resign because they don't want to play anymore? Is that what happens here? And make some barines. That's basically like a tower, right? Here's um one thing that players have started doing a bit better in today's age with um setting up towers is making sure you set up a screen length away from the enemy from the from the battle so then you can move forward easier because this tower should be set up here first and then you start moving forward with it so that way that the, the units get pushed back um it's especially important against say like a town center what you're trying to when you're trying to like attack like an egyptian town center you want to set set up the tower screen away so the like right about yeah right about here. If this was an Egyptian tower, you put a tower up back here. Um, so then you can wall around it and move forward and and, and stuff like that. Don't get attacked by mercenary. In this case, not get killed before it's built by Ballister. Still making the hero fanatics. Contarius here coming in. You get sniped before he does anything though. Oh, snipes the fire giant. Happy days. Go push. Um, whoops. Oh, something happened. Oh, the story is coming in yet again. Nice. Can I get some progress over here, Hotcha? No. Oh, he's got, he's got stone walls though. Big upgrade, up to 1250. I think both players are AFK at this point. I'm convinced. This is, like, this is an hour and 30 minutes, hour and 27 minutes in. Oh, Hotcha making a push. He's, make, he's getting, some, getting some ground. I like it. It's been another minute. 
Towers are coming up. Towers are coming down. They agree, no wonder. I have you with no idea. I don't think wonders were even a, a thought back then. But neither player has favor for a wonder, so... Or a titan. Oh, we got some of these. Oh, do they have the upgrade yet? Yes! Yes, these, this is the win. This is the win condition. This is how you get there. Canada is going to do ra ram raids. Let's see it. Let's see the ram raids. Okay, this is not what you want to do with a ram. You want to be sending him to a building. <laughs> Am I still here? I'm looking at the minimap. Alright, we're just chilling. Well, we're making a big push. The towers are coming up though. This is the screen length away. The towers are going in to stop them though. <laughs> Just push back. The towers are up. Gain nothing from that little uh, that little push there. Nothing happening. Okay. What's this? Destroyer's doing something. Boy, what's this? Okay. Oh, there's villagers in here. They've snuck in. Walls around here. Wall around the tree. Why are you chopping this tree? You still have Gaia Forest, my dude. Let's just not watch it. Let's just pretend it doesn't exist. Where was it? Yes! Oh! Big, big, big raid. Is this the game ender? Canada already defending it. Looks like Canada has finally got a hill for it. Making some progress. I don't think Archer can push back about against this ever. But, she's gonna be able to kill a wall here, which she'll instantly be rebuilt. rebuilt. Good. Glad to see that. Oh, not instantly rebuilt. But okay, oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, man. Look at all the action. It goes so fast. Wait. Hutch is losing. Why? Oh, he's got the destroyers. Can he hold? There's no ballast in here though, and Hotcho is AFK with his army. Destroyer is gonna run around. What? Okay. Right. Right. Building a hill fort. I like it. It's like Canada. He's getting close. He's getting close. Can he do it though? Wait, what's this? No, that gets instantly picked off. It's one trap, one idea in his mind, and that's go forward. Oh, he's got the dryad tree. It's over. There's no way that Hotcha with his 9,000 gold, 8,000 food can win now. <laughs> the dryad's popping out. It's all over. What's he going to do? Well, he gets the Hesper tree back. Wait, why are you running away? What happened? Did I miss something? I think I missed something. Another palace up, another yada. Back to square one. Oh, gets, the gets it down. Oh, that's a big, that's a big army. Where did that come from? Okay, this is officially a two hour long game. And Hotcha defends. And he's setting up over here yet again. Cool! Glad to see.
Let's see it get to the two. I want to see the two. Two, zero, two, zero, zero. That's what we want to see. Okay. Do we want to look at the progress bar? If we want to look at the progress bar, please type one in the chat. If not, please type two. Otherwise, we're just going to keep play fasting. Okay, no progress bar. <laughs> alright, alright. Okay, okay, we'll go back to play fasting. <laughs> Wait, I'll just push it back! Look at this guy go! He's getting the towers up! That's how you win! Towers! There's no baluster! He can't afford baluster, there's no wood on the map! Wait, what was this? Oh, it's just a, it's just Jarls. They don't matter. Anyways. Oh, you got another wall up. But the market just gets pushed back a little bit. And you can't stop this. You can't wall this market because all the guy are lush. Also, I've just got like 7,000 gold in the bank, so that's a thing. Good pick off. Gets the hill fort down. And you're losing the palace, though. this <laughs> two two hours ten minutes idea though you wanna you wanna keep pushing forward with balls. Whoop what's happening? <gasps> Is this it? How does Hotchi defend now? Has to defend two fronts. Hill four coming up. With one off sock. And the raiders are coming try and pick off some of this. I don't know. Hotchi didn't set up the wall like uh, Canada did. Is it gonna matter? Is he, you just you just no build y'all. You just build rams! You just build rams! <laughs> I'm just not gonna look. I'm just pretend like he's building rams into that hill fort. Yep, yep, building rams, yep. Building rams, the ram the rams are slowly coming into that hill fort. Slowly killing coming into the hill fort. Yep. Yep. Just give him like another 30 minutes to build a ram in that hill fort. <sighs> Good. Yep. Watch her not doing anything about the fact that there's a hill fort building rams over here. No matter. Um, the rams are just. Yep, he's got like 20 rams in that hill fort. Um, yep, 25 rams. They just keep coming. He's got so many rams in there. It's insane. Oh, we clicked off the hill fall. Let's just check how many rams are in this. Oh, still, yep, still many rams. Okay, yep, walls coming up. Bronze walls, yep, we like him. And all the rams coming out of this hill fall. No, yep, still no rams. Oh, rams over here though. I like that. Two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, heavy siege marine. The defense. That's something you could have been doing over here to pick these off, right? Villager is jabbing through the wall! <laughs> okay, that's interesting. And there's, yep, still Rams getting garrisoned over here, guys. Oh, Rams coming over here! Oh, he's got no wood, that's why he's not building Rams. Silly me, why would you spend the 221 gold on wood to build Rams? going up. We're about to hit the three hour mark.
I think these guys just wanted to have a three hour long game. Don't you? Oh, good night, Chrono JJ. Or are you just waking up? One of the two. Fast forward. <laughs> nope, the Hesperus tree is back! It's over! The extra population is so much! Seed for rain? Sejin? I like it. Can I just pick up all of the side buildings? Just imagine if you had a transport ship and just filled in this location here with buildings. The walls are up everywhere. This is starting to look like a 30 minute game from um, from today's day and age. This is like Joe and this is magic, just walling up the entire map in 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh, and all the rams. <gasps> the rams! It's not the rams, it's the random Ulsark attack. What? He literally... What happened? I missed it. Yeah. But what happened was... What? Go back and show it again, he says. Yeah, we have rewind. We have rewind effects here in 2003. Okay. Let me paint you a picture. Yeah. Right? Let me paint you a picture. We have nine second Ulf Sarks with conscript longhouse soldiers. So these are four point, roughly 4.5 second train time. You also get the, um, the other one as well, right? Um, uh, Levy Longhouse. So it's 40% less. So what Canada did was he built Ulfsark. He built Ulfsark out of this Longhouse. Surely that's what happened. Just out of this Longhouse he made 20, 21 Ulfsark. That's what happened. Great, we got it. All right. Well, um, seeing as you all enjoyed that so much, uh, I want to thank, I believe, let me just, I'm, I want to thank Keen Flame for um, uh, enjoying, uh, for, throw, for showing me this recorded game. If you're unaware of who he is, he uh, has a YouTube channel himself and he does, uh, and used to make content, sometimes does, and very hilarious guy. And, um, yeah, longest game I've ever seen. Three hours and five minutes. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to play some games now because that's enough casting for one millennia. And yeah, let's do it.